Hello guys and welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to show you how you can properly backtest to reach profitability and consistency in your trading. A lot of you have the wrong idea about backtesting and majority of traders out there they think that backtesting is simply pushing buttons and testing their strategy especially their win rate and their profit and that's completely wrong right. Today I'm going to show you the right way and it is also the hard way, right? It's, there is no easy thing in trading. This is going to take a lot of work, right, from your end. This is not some kind of 100% secret indicator that gives you buy and sell signals. This is not how I made 100k this month so you can copy me type of videos. This is not related to a secret trick that you're going to apply today and tomorrow you're going to have tremendous results. No, this is going to take hours and hours, hundreds of hours of work so you can reach the level that you want to, all right? So if you are ready, then continue watching. If you're not, close this video, all right? Today, I'm going to show you two main ways or two main phases of backtesting that you need to pass before actually trying to take entries actually trying to sell and buy right to test your own strategy so the first type of backtesting and this type i do it every single day and and it took my level of understanding price to a whole different level and as a result i became a better trader so the first type of uh, backtesting i call it the unbiased backtesting so what is the unbiased backtesting and the unbiased backtesting is simply following price and understanding each move during the session. This right here is going to take a lot of time to finish a session. Let's say, for example, the New York session. So the main objective of this right here, or let's first of all talk about how you do this. What you want to do is you're going to open a session, right? From your favorite backtesting platform. So let's say price traded like this. It traveled from point A, right, to point B. What you want to do is to stop and you can study what happened from point A to point B or what led for price to do this up move right here. So study what happened right here. What was the conditions right here? What was the variables that potentially led to this up move? Maybe we have a sweep, maybe priced up into a point of interest. So what was that point of interest? What you want to do is to only take screenshots and annotate what happened here. And maybe here there was something that price targeted, right? Maybe so you're going to take screenshots and you're going to annotate everything that happened from point A to point B. So you're going to dissect every single move. So here maybe price did this all right so what happened here we have a sweep on liquidity right and you're going to take a screenshot and also you're going to look for the higher time frames what happened on the time frame above this one what happened on the time frame below this one right so you're going to try to understand each move that happened and you're going to do it and biased right this is very important you're going to look at price objectively you're not trying to predict whether price from here is going to travel lower or higher or is going to consolidate. No, you need to remove that idea from your head. Your job is to follow price objectively. If price wants to trade higher, you're going to stop and you're going to look and you're going to try to understand why price traveled higher. If price traveled down, you're going to stop and you're going to take screenshots and you're going to try again to understand why price did that. And the reason why we are unbiased and we are not trying to form an idea of where price might go is that, let me give you an example. Let's say, for example, you open the chart and you want to trade live, right? With your account, your funded account or something like this. You are doing your analysis, right? Objectively, logically. And let's say, for example, you took an entry from here, from this level. So now, a lot of times you are not thinking objectively as before. Now you are biased, right? You are biased. Now you are looking for signals right here, looking for more confirmations that you are in the right direction. 
Sometimes price will give you uh, clear signals that it will want to reverse, but since you are biased, right, since you are in this long position, you're not going to think clearly and you're going to miss a lot of information that price is giving you, right, because you are being subjective to this trade idea, right? But here, in contrast, here you are simply seeing or trying to understand what price is doing. And the whole purpose of this unbiased backtesting is that to train your memory, right? To train your eyes and memory because price does the same thing every single day. Price does the same thing every single day, but it's not that easy, right? So there is a lot of moves out there. So a move to the upside can happen for all kind of different reasons, right? There are a lot of variations of a move to the upside, a lot of conditions, a lot of a lot of different buildups, right? Right here, different targets. So what you want to do is you train your memory and the next time you see a setup and next time you see maybe a move, maybe something like this. And since you have seen it hundreds of times before, all right, so you tell yourself, I have seen this before. When I see condition A and B and C, in this specific point of interest right and then price traveled higher into this specific point of interest and there was the, the condition x and y and c then most of the times price will reject and trade lower you concluded this by seeing this whole move this whole setup this whole formation many times using the unbiased backtesting so and it looks something like this. So I have a sample. When I try to backtest maybe an AM session of New York, I stop price at after every single move, whether it is the upside or the downside or just a consolidation. And I take a lot of screenshots, right? And I try and I try to take notes, right? So as you can see, right here a lot of screenshots. So let me give you an example on the chart right here, right? Let me give you an example. All right, so this is a beautiful example. Let's say that you are here, right? Let's see you are at this point. What you want to do is to annotate what happened, what is happening on the left and what is happening to the right. And you're, and you're not, again, you are not trying to predict whether price is trying to trade up or down. You are simply following price and trying to understand each move. So let's say, for example, we have a zone right here, right? So let's move on. All right, so I see that there was a move to the downside right here, all right? So what happened before that move and what was the target of that move? Let's say, for example, we can see that we have a sweep right here, right? So price before expanded the downside, we had a sweep. So price runs an old swing. Also, we had, if you can see that we are expanding, pulling back, expanding, pulling back, right? Expanding, so now this is a pullback, right? This is the objective of this move, could be a pullback, we don't know, right? So you take a lot, of, so you take a screenshot of this. Let's move on, right? All right. So we can see here that price stopped at the 50% of the zone. This is uh, important too. You're going to take another screenshot and you're going to annotate how price stopped at the 50%, right? Moving on. All right. So we can see that there is a move to the upside. So what happened before or what is the origin of this move and the target. So we can see that, all right, we are at the 50% of this zone. And we can see also that before that move to the upside, we swept this low right here, just like it happened right here. All right, so this is interesting. This is, maybe this is a recurring pattern, right? So let's, uh, and also you can see that price rejected from another zone, right? All right, so let's, and also the 50%, right? Let's move in on. Okay, we traded now to the upside. 
And we can see, all right, so this is my model, right? We can see that we traded above this, return back to this catalog. This is a CSS confirmation. So I'm I'm tra I'm backtesting based on the concepts I learned from TTFX. If you are an ICT student, for example, that you're gonna backtest based on ICT concepts, all right? So this is not a strategy uh, specific, right? It works on everything. So I move to the upside happened, return back, traded to the upside, so rejected from this candle, and now we are trading to the downside. And you're gonna stop right here. So why this move happened, what happened here, and why we are trading to the downside. So basically what you want to do is to wait for the move to stop. Okay, maybe here we have a rejection. And now you're gonna work with this move to the upside. All right, so this takes a lot of time. I take around two hours, null stop. If I'm back as a null stop to finish an AM and a PM session, right? Sometimes it takes up to four hour if I'm taking some breaks, but it is worth it, guys. You are training your memory to see recurring patterns. You're not trying to predict price. You are simply following price. You are enhancing your price reading skills. And this is going to help you tremendously in the future. Believe me, I do this every single day, right? Because sometimes when you are trading live and you see some move to the upside or the downside, I'm telling you that using this type of backtesting you're going to know exactly what will happen next because you have seen it hundreds of times before with that with those specific conditions. So from here we can see that we swept this, all right? So this happened a lot of times. You can notice that the move to here to here, we had a sweep before that here also, and we are also on zones, right? So here we had a sweep and we were trading to the downside, all right? Here price stopped. So why price stopped right here? Okay, what do we have to the left? We have a zone, right? All right, so price topped into the 30% of this zone. And you're gonna take a screenshot and you're gonna annotate, make something like this, for example, okay? Something to draw your attention to later on when you are reviewing the screenshots, right? You can see that price rejected to the upside from this 30%, right? Now you stop and you're gonna study this move to here from point A to point B. We can see that price rejected now from this zone right here, right? All right, so let's keep uh, moving on price. You're gonna stop right here and you're gonna study now this move, right? And so on and so on. I'm not gonna tape read the whole session, but as you can see, from here to here, this is gonna take you like a solid 15 minute of backtesting for this, for this simple uh, price action, right? But doing this every single day, again, it will take your training to the next level to the absolute next level. Now, the second type of backtesting, I call it the statistical backtesting. So let's say that you don't have a model, right? You are a beginner to a certain trading concept and you don't have a model yet. Using this unbiased backtesting, you're gonna see something that repeats every single time and you're gonna relate to, right? You have some, so you, maybe you find something that repeats, right? A pattern or a formation that when you have condition A, B, and C present at the origin and the target, there is condition D and E, right? Then there is, then price is likely to trade lower rather than trade higher, right? Price trades lower more than it trades higher when you see these five conditions. Three on the origin and two, at the target. So this is something that you found that it repeats using this type of backtesting. And this is how you find something that you relate to. Not something that you saw on YouTube or you saw something posting about it on Twitter, 
because that model can fit his personality, but it might not fit your personality. So you need to find something that you feel comfortable with, right? And it was you who found it, right? So you have a conviction about it. You're not taking another trader's word for it, right? So let's say that you have a setup using this unbiased backtesting. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take it to the statistical backtesting. The statistical backtesting, again, is not pushing buttons, all right? It's not pushing buttons. All you're going to do right here is you're going to open up trading session, right? The AM and the PM session. If you trade London, you're going to use London. You don't use New York. You don't use New York. You only use London. If you trade in the New York session, you're going to use the New York session, right? So what you want to do right here is you want to collect every single data about this model that you have found right here. And you're going to log it into a trading journal. I already made a video on how you can use or how you can create a trading journal, a detailed trading journal. So some of the statistical data that you're going to extract using this one right here is what are the conditions, for example, how many times the setup will present itself per day. So this is very important, right? Let's say that you trade on the one minute. You want to find how many times the setup presents itself. If the setup presents itself like three times or four times per uh, trading session, and you have extracted that for a lot of days, right? Not just like a week or a month, but at least five or six months of data, and eventually you found that the setup will repeat itself four times, the average of four times per trading session, and then you can expect when trading live, the frequency of the setup and how you can manage the risk using this one right here and what are the daily target and what are your daily goals, right? And also it will help you with FOMO, the fear of missing out. So you know that you will likely to have four trades per day and there is no need to chase a minus setups right one more thing that you're going to need to extract from this type of backtesting is the conditions guys very very important or the variables let's say that setup um, happened right here right and let me give you an example the setup is a simple sweep right so like this adding trading to the downside. So what you want to do is to look for variables, let's say for example, price topped a point of interest. So what is the type of that point of interest? What is the level of that point of interest that price tapped into? Is it the 50%? Is it the 70%? Right? What were the conditions on the downside? Did we have equal lows? Did we have imbalances? Did we have both? What about the higher time frame? Is the higher time frame is trading to the downside or is it trading to the upside? So is this a continuation to the downside or is this is a simple pullback, right? And what you want to do is to analyze these um, conditions, these variables, and see which combination of variables will give you the best result, right? And it's going to take a lot of time. This is the refinement process of the model. Also, you're going to extract the average stop loss, right? The average TP. Let's say, for example, the model will most of the times gives you 1R or 2R or 3R. If the model gives you 1R, what is the win rate? Let's say, for example, it is an 80% win rate. If the model gives you 2R, let's say it's like 70% now the win rate. Which one will give you the best uh, accumulated R, right? And remember that you're going to extract all of this in hindsight. You're not trying to push buttons or predict anything. You are simply extracting these informations from hindsight charts. Now, the end goal of this statistical backtesting, and you're going to use this on at least five or six months of data, right? And remember, you don't want to mess around with the time frames. If you're going to use the one minute as 
your execution you're going to use the 15 minute as your hard time frame and the five minute for the link between the two right don't go to the one hour don't go to the five second you need to choose one time frame and you're going to stick to it a combination of time frames and you're going to stick to them else or else a lot of things will uh, change like the for example the average stop loss and the frequency of the trades per day right so you're going to need to choose a fixed combination of time frames so and the end goal of this statistical backtesting is to come out with a trading model right a training model with variables all right so these are the optimal variables that you have found so when you see condition a condition b and condition c a condition t present this will give you let's say 75 percent win rate right the model when we see this combination of conditions it will give you 70 it will work 75 percent of the times right remember that we have collected this this win rate with hand side backtesting now you're going to move on to the third type of backtesting which is live backtesting right we are still not trading live money right we're still with the backtesting process so what is live backtesting now you can go to a trading platform or that allows you to actually take entries and you're going to start executing that model right whenever you see those conditions on the chart you're going to take an entry and you're not trying to cheat or anything all right when you miss a setup don't try to rewind the tape and take the trade no you want to trade like you are trading with live money and you will not have this right here you will not have this win rate first you're gonna have like a 50 percent win rate although you are using the same model that yield to you 75 percent win rate right so this is the perfect win rate of the model your goal for live backtesting is to perfect the executions and to stick to the plan so you can reach this right here because here when you are live backtesting you're gonna take some stupid trades you're gonna have the errors to push the button even though the conditions are not met yet you're gonna miss setups you're gonna hesitate although you are backtesting right and this happens a lot of time so you're not gonna trade with demo or live money until you reach this 75 percent win rate so one thing to note if you extracted this uh, win rate from a statistical from five months of data you're going to use another uh, different set of data right here. You're going to use another five months of data and you're going to try to reach that right here. Again, you will not reach it instantly, but with time, right, with more execution, you're going to reach it. You're going to finally reach the perfect win rate. Now, all the then, when you reach this, now you can go to demo trading. And again, you will not reach the 75% and simply you're going to need a lot of time a lot of executions you're going to perfect your executions in a live moving market right but eventually since whenever these conditions are present it will give you that 75 percent right win rate and that if you take maybe 2r right and you're going to stick to the stop loss you're not going to move it so basically you're going to use the same conditions that you have found right here and you have tested and perfected in the live backtesting you're going to use it in the demo trading right and with time your psychology would be better because you will understand that whenever you break the rules you're going to take losses right so eventually you're going to try to stick to these conditions right here eventually you're going to reach this 75 percent and finally you're going to go to live market conditions right I talked a lot but believe me guys these are the steps that every single trader that I know a profitable trader real profitable traders not marketers they went through this and again it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of hard work and if you're not serious about trading then this business is not for you I still do this 
every day. I still backtest with this type of backtesting every single day. There is no excuses. I still try to extract subsequent data from backtesting about my model, right? How can I make it better? I still live backtesting. I'm not doing the demo trading phase, right? So now I'm trading live. But believe me, if you are looking for that easy solution to reach profitability, you will never find it. So if you have any questions, DM me on my Twitter account or leave a comment down below and I will answer you as soon as I can. Now I'll be trading and good luck.